Good to see all your faces. Ladies, gentlemen, and Nickelback fans alike. Uh, you, whoever said that shit is brave. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is, it's exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, you were, like, to confess a public adoration for Nickelback is like Rosa Parks brave. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean? You don't have any idea what kind of anger you can spark off in a crowd of just shadowy faces. You'd be on the way to your car in the garage, someone just throw a brick at your shit. You killed my father with Nickelback! <laughs> Chad Kroger put a vendetta on your life. This is amazing. <laughs> really, bored to myself in comedy shows. Um, Stella, delicious. I want to share a little bit about myself. Uh, I watch a lot of television, so much so that it bleeds into my real life, and I can no longer discern uh, reality from things that seem fictional. Like I was just walking down the street. Uh, living my life as a real human being, and then I would see something, and then out loud to myself, I would say, oh man, that would make a great commercial. It's a very weird, disorienting moment to experience. Like one time my friend's dad came over to our apartment complex to visit, and uh, it's LA, so you know we got very slender parking spaces, all right? And he was a man in a truck with a determination to park that truck in that slender parking space. So he just started ramming that truck in and backing it out and ramming it in and backing it out. And the whole time, his daughter's standing off to the side and she's like, Dad, there's no way your truck is gonna fit. Dad, you're fucking up your fit. Dad, the side mirrors are folded in. Dad, your paint's getting ruined. And then she goes, Dad, what are you gonna do about all these scratches? And then he just goes, nothing, it's a truck. And I was like, oh shit, that is a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I was no truck company jumped on that shit. How has there not been a national ad campaign with just a dude with a five o'clock shadow with his tight black leather just suckling onto his skin, just driving around town in his truck, just dark ass sunglasses glued to his face, just fucking not giving a fuck about anybody. And somebody's like, hey, your truck's on fire. Shouldn't you get out of that thing? It's gonna explode. Won't happen. It's a truck. Doc, buy one. <laughs> Dudes is driving his truck around town in school zones doing 70 and the 20, not giving a shit about kids playing in the street. Someone's like, hey, is that 18 kilos of heroin in your cab? Aren't the police gonna stop you? Can't see me, it's a truck. Dodge, buy a truck, smoke some drugs. Yes. <laughs> Dude's sitting at home on the couch in the suburbs watching TV, sees that shit. He's like, what? Do I have a key of sportage in my driveway? I am not a bitch. <laughs> I put a down payment on a Daewoo. Damn it. There's like four people here who've been very poor. Yeah. And how you know, like anyone who's owned something that's very bad, if someone repeats it out loud, they're just like, Daewoo. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. a bad time. A bad man. All the bad things happen. They were like reliving, just like being in stores, like, I'm sorry, that's fine. Like, fuck! <laughs> that thing though, right? Like, I just pick a uh, Dodge out of the safe uh, uh, for the joke out of the truck, out of, out of a hat. Because it's fucking any truck company I could have done that joke with, right? Because listen, I don't know everyone that drives or owns a truck. I know it's a surprise to some of you, but believe me, okay? But based on the way you allow yourselves to be depicted in society at large over the years, I'm very inclined to believe that all of you are assholes. It's all I'm saying, okay? It's a very simple point. If I had done the joke with Ford, it would have gone something like, Ford Tough, oh, look at me, fucking Ford Tough. I'm gonna drive a truck right off the Grand Canyon, lay that bitch clean on four wheels. I'm Ford Tough. Look at me, I'm a fucking man. I stop my truck with my dick. I put my penis in the ignition because I'm a fucking man. I'm gonna drive around town and I fill my gas tank with old spices. I'm a fucking man. And I eat a wing and I fire off my gun every time I finish one because I'm a fucking man. And then I go to the sports bar and I pay up my testicles because fuck currency, I'm a man, four tough. <laughs> around that shit. You can't live a life philosophy with that. Because when I see children inside of trucks, the first thing I think to myself is, your parent is probably an asshole. That's the first thing that I think to myself. Because I imagine that child coming home from school someday, and they come through the door, and they're just like, hey, the fuck happened to you today? Suck that shit up, motherfucker. We're jobs and tough in this house, okay? We don't play no snivelly lip pussy shit. You better go to school tomorrow and punch somebody in the motherfucking eye, okay? Because this jobs are tough. Now, what I'm saying is, see if there's a Wikipedia article on sacking up, you bitch. <laughs>
That is too long for a commercial, so we'll never stay. There's a thing I watch a lot of commercials. I see this guy pop up a lot, Magic Johnson. Uh, Magic Johnson, I think, personally, is a very cool dude. I've realized though, a lot of people hate the fuck out of Magic Johnson. Do you know what I mean? It's like a weird guy. You bring up Magic Johnson around some people, are like, fuck that motherfucker, he's still alive! <laughs> You know, you get 80, you get AIDS in the 80s, and like you're still around two decades later, and people can get real suspicious. That's cool. All right, that's fine, okay? You can't just start hatching hypotheses that he's got alien fucking semen. You know, like he's an alien, sir. If motherfucker's still alive, I mean, you get real angry whenever he comes up. And I'm just saying, like, maybe we can step, take a step back from the Magic Johnson hate for a little bit. It's a real simple theory, okay? Like, this is all that happened to Magic Johnson. Basically, this motherfucker got crazy rich in the 80s, which was called Reaganomics. All right, it's always called triple down economics, and motherfucker was just crazy rich, and then he was like, "Fuck, I have AIDS. That is terrible. I am dead." And then modern medicine was like, "Hey, baby, um, <laughs> we got this thing we're working on for this thing called AIDS. Nobody knows about yet. Uh, we gonna give you a little sample taste, and you can feel better." Like Magic was like, "Fucking awesome. I have a lot of money. I'm gonna do that shit." And that's that's all that happened. Now this is what we know about medicine, okay? We know that it takes like decades for medicine to reach uh, the common market, also known as poor people and serfs, all right, and the you who all right? You motherfuckers don't even know that there are cures for diseases that haven't hit the public yet, okay? It just takes 30 fucking years for it to get to us, all right? So if you're Magic Johnson, and you get a chance to jump to the front of the line for AIDS cures, you gotta take that shit, okay? That's all I'm saying, just don't hate that motherfucker so much, maybe. Just, just be like, oh, he got rich in the 80s, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the next time someone's like, that motherfucker's alive because the Aztecs gave him some fucking servant, and you're like, hey, hey man, that's just Ronald Reagan. Relax. <laughs> now let's just watch basketball, it's cool. Um, this is another thing that gets in my mind a lot. It's public scourge, the Nimbus. It's a fucking thing that we have to stamp out, and I'm talking about the obvious uh, inequality in public restrooms for men and women. Yes, exactly, yeah. All right, I'm gonna put it to you this way, okay? There's never been a man who walked into a public establishment and said the following to himself. I expect the restroom in here to be well kept and sanitary. That's not a fucking thing if you have a penis, okay? Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. You don't have expectations if you go out into the world at large. If you're a woman, you say things like, oh, I hope there's a spot for me on the couch in the potpourri basket is filled this time. You get an accident, you turn into Gwyneth Paltrow, it's weird. It's a very strange thing to go into. And I'm not talking about places where you expect things to be upkept, okay, and nice, all right, like a Sears or a Chili's. Or I'm talking about real grimy shit, okay? That's the kind of fucking shit I'm talking about. Women, you can walk in and you just expect nice things. Like if you are a dude and you walk into a restroom and there's a trough in there, what are you gonna do? You're gonna pee. You're not gonna fucking think twice about the thing, the fact that you're peeing in the thing they feed animals from a farm. You won't even give a fuck about that. If you are a woman and you walk into a restroom and there's a trough in there, do you just hear the silence and the disgust that has taken over the room right now? You're gonna complain to management and they're gonna be like, oh my god, we're so sorry for insulting you and your dignity. What the fuck were we thinking? You're gonna pee in the thing that animals pee from? You go in a fucking public establishment, you go on one side of the hallway, and it looks like the shit from a Jane Austen novel, like Pride and Prejudice, or something like that. And then you go ten yards this way, and you go to the men's room, and then you have a set of Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Yes. The shit! It's ridiculous, son. It's ridiculous. There's just some things, women, you have more control and power over in society. And not everything. There's a glass ceiling, I get it. But some things you get away with. Like the tiny penis card. Plenty of women in here to play the tiny penis card on somebody. You're like, oh, that dude with the tiny penis, this is me. So sexy and satisfied. That's actually too big. Look at me. I am so sexy and satisfied. You've done that shit. And it's fine, okay? You can do it. What I'm saying is you can't set up a situation in which penises can be too big or too small, but vaginas are just always the right size. Do you know what I mean? It's not fair. Because if a dude was like, oh, this is a large vagina, you would call him an asshole. Good night, bitches.